Have you ever gone down a dark alleyway at night and got shanked? It hurts, but why does it hurt? All right, that's dumb. Today we're talking about every single dark type move in Pokemon and explaining what it does, why it does, and how that doing fits the descriptor of dark type. So what even is dark type? Well, it's not literally darkness, not the lack of light, but it's also not what many people say it is either. Lots of people say it means evil in Japanese, so it's evil type, but that's also oversimplifying it. Japanese is a very complex language. I mean, plop their name for the type into Google Translate and, oh. But this whole translation business is worthy of its own video. So for now, know that dark type isn't like the embodiment of all evil type or evil incarnate destroyer of worlds type. It's more like rude, mean, underhanded, etc. Which is a good descriptor of most of these moves. They are pretty dark. But I'd like to put an emphasis on most there. Most fit dark well. But then a few? Eh. I guess it works, but then the last few, uh, no, they would be much better not dark type. And those are our three categories, in that order, so let's begin. We are running a sale on our keychains and stickers right now, also this ultra soft noggin shirt, and once they're gone, they're gone for good. Get them while they last at noggin.net. The move Assurance works well. The user attacks the target, and if the target has already taken damage that turn, then the power of the move doubles. The game just shows it as some hands slapping, but the manga and anime sort of clarify that it's just a generic sort of attack. Pawnier doesn't slap, it just slices and stabs! The move's Japanese name translates to Make Sure, which I think explains the move best. Imagine, for instance, a mob boss with a group of goons. Hey, when you're done with him, make sure he's dead. It can also be explained as just a generic attack, but if the enemy was recently damaged, then you make sure that damage is deep by striking the same spot again immediately. Very dark. And then the move beat up is underhanded cheating at its finest. When used, all of the conscious Pokemon in your party come out of their Pokeballs to attack the target. Like, how is this allowed? Well, it probably isn't because it's never been done in the anime and the one time it was used in the Pokemon Adventures manga, it's done by Silver, you know, the bad guy, Giovanni's son. But clearly, <laughs> the move is dark. It's again like a group of Yakuza goons kidnapping someone and beating them up in an alleyway. One keeps you held down and the others just take turns punching you. So those two moves are extremely obviously dark type, perfectly fitting of the definition. But now, bite is an interesting one. Most animals do bite attacks as their main attacks because teeth are hard and sharp. It isn't inherently evil, it's just their only means of self-preservation, be it defense or against their prey, that they must eat to live. And because of that, at first glance I'd argue that bite should probably not be dark type, but now consider that Pokemon tend to be a lot more human-esque than real animals. Bite is more so dark because when biting comes to human combat in traditional fighting, biting is seen as a jerky thing to do. You're wrestling, you're boxing, or street fighting or something. It's a show of power and skill. Biting takes no skill. It's very animal-esque, so biting your way out of a grappling match is considered rude. It's just very pain. It can draw blood, and it causes the receiver to flinch. You just bit them, hence the similar function in Pokemon. And the move Crunch is basically an upgraded bite. It's more powerful, but instead of causing flinching, it lowers the opponent's defense. Compared to the bite animation in the games, Crunch often has extra bits flying everywhere, which could be symbolic of crushing away bone or bits of defensive shell. Bones and hard plates like that would normally go crunch when a predator bites down hard after all, and suddenly being crunched in that way would for sure lower your defense of some kind. And then there's Jaw Lock, the signature move of Dreadnought. This move prevents the user and the target from switching out until either of them faints. So it's a big crunch. And it does not let go dark. And pretty accurate to real alligator snapping turtles. They have powerful jaws, near impossible to force open. And usually they won't let go of whatever they've grabbed until it's dead. 
Dark Pulse now gives us our first special attack of the video, and with that, we need to briefly go over Dark Aura, as it plays a big part in what makes Dark-type attacks dark. The in-game description of this move reads as follows. The user releases a horrible aura imbued with dark thoughts. This may also make the target flinch. Alright, so what does that mean? So, with Dragon and Fairy, we were able to explain their magical properties as just that, magical. Dragon-type is explained as a sorcery-type, whereas Fairy is light or nature magic, so I guess in this case then, dark is like a subset of dragon. It's dark or black magic. Not as raw as sorcery, but still dark or black all the same. Magic with the sole purpose of scaring or harming others, often with selfish gain as a bonus. It uses the power of darkness, or say black mana like in Magic the Gathering, so in this case, uh, black, dark, infinity energy? Hmm. But we can see this aura depicted in some other attacks, like the previously mentioned Assurance. It's not just a generic normal slap or two, those slaps are charged with dark aura. You can see it in the colors in its depiction. It's the same way that dragon moves differentiate themselves from generic claw and tail swipes, and even generic fire breath. It's dragony because it's the color of dragon magic, of sorcery. And so, Dark Pulse has the user gather up their sick and twisted thoughts and manifests them in a magical form that pulses out from it and damages everyone around it. Lovely. Dark Void is also powered by dark energy, and it's the signature move of Darkrai. Fun fact, the name Darkrai comes from the word dark and the Japanese word for dark. So I call him Dark Dark? Sometimes Dark Dork. With this move, Dark Dork drags its foes, yes plural, into a world of total darkness, causing them to fall asleep and have terrible nightmares. And that's the power of Dark Aura. The move Night Days or Night Burst was the signature move of Zora Arc until they gave it to Lunala also. The user lets loose a pitch black shockwave at its target, which may lower their accuracy because you got darkness in your eyes. It's a lot harder to see when there's the manifestation of darkness in your eyes eyes, and your life sucks just a bit more now due to all the darkness in your eyes. But okay, what is this darkness? Because it's not squid ink, it's just darkness clouds? I guess it's more dark aura magic. The power of the night, which is inherently dark, or evil, because most bad deeds are done in the dark. It's harder to get caught. Also, throughout cultures around the world, the moon and night sky is often a symbol of evil things, wicked spirits, ghosts, the supernatural, scary stuff. Dark. Alright, I think the in-game description for the move Nasty Plot is my favorite. The user stimulates its brain by thinking bad thoughts. And I love the little animation too. It's so good. And clearly dark type. Dark types tend to be all about those bad thoughts. It's how they're immune to psychic attacks. Their brains or minds are so twisted with negativity and bad that psychic attacks don't work on them because they have totally different brains from the minds of all the other types. And clearly because those special dark attacks utilize negative thoughts being put into Dark Aura, clearly thinking up a bunch of them all at once, it's gonna raise your special attack. The move Fake Tears has the user pretend to cry, which lowers the opponent's special defense. Again, special defense is like a focus or mental defense, so your opponent suddenly breaking down into tears would be a bit odd. It's off-putting. Are you really gonna beat up such a sad, wimpy thing? Maybe you should hold back a bit. But the thing is, the user was only pretending. It is a ruse, a trick, a lie, a bamboozle, and such trickery is so certainly fitting of the dark type, lying your way to advantages. It's just like the move False Surrender, the signature move of Morgrim and Grimmsnarl. They pretend to surrender and bow their head in submission, only for them to trick you. They stab you with the hair that they can magically control. This signature move fits with their fairy tale inspirations perfectly, by the way. We did a whole video about that up here. Check it out later. Faint Attack is also essentially the same deal. The user approaches the target disarmingly, then throws a Sucker Punch. It hits without fail. And then Sucker Punch is is also just the same kind of move too, same idea. It's a surprise, unexpected attack, somewhere weak. But this move only works if the opponent was preparing an attack too. The idea is that while attacking, the Dark Mon hits a weak spot on the attacker instead of trying to avoid or block the attack. This tends to be an unexpected move in real fights. And both Sucker Punch and Faint Attack are basically that trope of the school bully saying they aren't gonna beat you up because we're friends, right? They say as they approach and friendly put their hand on your shoulder 
shoulder. You let down your guard because uh, you guess you're not gonna have to fight this guy. And then right when you relax, he punches you right in the gut. Very dark. There is zero honor in such trickery. And the move Payback is also textbook bully. If the user can use this attack after the foe attacks, its power is doubled. It's like, oh, you want to stand up for yourself and fight back the bully, so you hit him, and then he's just like, oh. And he punches you right in the gut even harder. And bullies, delinquents, goons, mob boss people, thieves, they're all dark type. Lash Out was added most recently in the Isle of Armor DLC, and it has the user simply lash out its frustration at the target. If any of its stats were lowered that turn, the power of this move doubles. This move works really well. Just think of the big, strong, but dumb goon trope getting really frustrated during a fight with a small hero that's slowly, slowly whittling them down with chip damage. It's frustrating! And the added aggression makes them attack harder, so more damage! Wicked Blow is the dark type signature move of Urshifu. Having mastered the dark style, it becomes one punch man and deals a single devastating punch. It always lands a critical hit. And it's essentially just that. One big mean punch charged with dark aura. Very straightforward. The guaranteed crit gets the idea across that it is always striking a weak point, which is mean. And G-Max One Blow is the same, but bigger. You can even break through Protect. And Fiery Wrath is the last new move, but we don't know much about it as of right now. It is the signature move of Galarian Moltres, and it summons a pillar of dark aura which damages the opponent and can cause flinching. It likely does this in a similar fashion to Dark Pulse, but because it's from a bird so evil that it exudes dark aura at all times, uh, yeah, it's, 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 ew, it, it's how arch, it's very arch. Now then, the move Flatter is used to confuse the target and raise their special attack, so that if they hurt themselves in their confusion, it hurts even more. It's all very manipulative and wily. There's gotta be a trope for this. Scheming Loki-esque tricksters using words and plots instead of strength to win battles. I feel like that's a big part of dark type moves. With this one, in the middle of battle, you just graciously flatter your opponent. They weren't expecting that, so they get a little bit confused. Or perhaps confusion is just the closest thing to what would actually happen. And so, you know, game mechanics, that's why they do that. Because what would actually happen is it gets overconfident in its ability. You just flattered it. It gets more amped, hence the raising of the special attack. And its overconfidence leads to it missing more often, maybe even hurting itself. Similar to confusion, but not literally. Maybe. It's game mechanics. The move Taunt follows a similar idea. The user taunts the opponent into only using attack moves, a sort of you can't get me, spank, which obviously makes the other one mad, and now it really wants to get them. It's all more tricky manipulation stuff. And there's another one, Torment. The user torments the foe, making them unable to use the same attack more than once in a row. I'm not sure how tormenting someone would do that, but it is fitting of the dark type. Torment is defined as severe physical or mental suffering, so the user is making fun of its opponent, bringing back their bad memories, causing them to have a bit of a mental breakdown so they can't do the same thing repeatedly anymore? Hmm, well the move's Japanese name, Ichiman, translates to falsely accuse or to find a fault to pick a fight, which I think helps a lot in understanding the intentions here. It's like accusing the other Pokemon of not having any skill. Huh, you're relying solely on only one move? How lame. Your training must be bad because your trainer is bad. The trainer only has you use one move. <laughs> <laughs> and it hurts. Feelings and words. Ah. Uh, so now it just has to use different moves just to prove it wrong. Sticks and stones can break your bones and dark type words sure hurt me. And these last few moves are all in a similar vein to Parting Shot, which was the signature move of Pangoro until the very next gen, which is amazing. We'll get to why in a moment. So a Parting Shot is a threat, insult, condemnation, sarcastic retort, or the like uttered upon leaving. So it's like saying, by the way, your cooking sucks as you're walking out the door. It hurts the feelings of the people you told it to, so in the case of the Pokemon move, it lowers their attack and special attack, and then the user retreats. But get this, another great example is like, you're already dead, or some other sort of finishing blow retort you say right before your combat ends because you did a bunch of punchy and stuff. And the reason it's so perfect here is because Pangoro is a walking JoJo reference. He does things like that constantly. 
Plus, he's the delinquent stereotype, perfectly fitting of a dark type Mon to be based on him. And the animation for this move, it's, it's, it's anime hijinks. It's like a manga speech bubble and the, the, the poses and the, <gasps> it's so over the top. I love it, I love it so much. It's very dark type because it's mean. Snarl could be seen as just that. The user snarls, showing its teeth, looking aggressive, growling, all to intimidate the enemy, hence the move lowering the opponent's special attack. Doing all this is mean. It's scary. So dark. But interestingly, the Japanese name of the move is Bark Out, and its in-game description says the user yells as if it's ranting about something, making the target's special attack stat decrease. Well, that's not a snarl at all! But either way, yelling and ranting to harm the focus of the special attack of the opponent, yeah, it works. It's dark, just not as obviously. Power Trip was the signature move of Crocodile until Generation 8, and this move would have it boast about its strength before attacking. The more the user's stats are raised, the greater the move's power. Basically, as the stats of the user are going higher and higher, it's getting more and more full of itself, and how much better it is than you. It's very prideful, and pride is a deadly sin, so dark type. Plus, going on a big power trip is a very common trait for villains and antagonists. And then the move Punishment goes and does sort of the opposite thing. The more the target has powered up with stat changes, the greater the move's power. It's also an antagonist trait. Oh, you think you're better than me? You think you're stronger than me? I'll prove you wrong! The move Embargo, or Seize in Japanese, has the victim's held item suddenly become useless and the trainer can no longer use items on it either. Alright, that's, that's useful, but how? In the older games, it's shown as putting a dark force field around the Pokémon, so okay, the trainer can't access it anymore, gotcha, but the more recent games show it as magic chains? And Battle Revolution shows the items themselves getting a shield around them, which makes more sense, I guess. When a country puts an embargo on something or someone, they are no longer able to trade with that someone or trade that thing. For example, the United States embargoed Cuba for a number of years. Cuba could barely export anything. Food, medicine, and humanitarian supplies were the only things they could get, so the name embargo works well. The victim can no longer get help from the outside, as in the trainer, and it has some issues with its own supplies too, unable to export them. So I guess it works just through dark magic, that has to be it. I mean it is a pretty rude thing to do, so dark type is fitting. The move fling is much simpler, the user throws its held item at their opponent, and the power and effects of the move depend on what that item is. Is it a berry? It's weak, getting hit by berries doesn't really hurt. Zoom monster. <laughs> But is that item an iron ball? Expect massive damage. Is it a flame orb? Expect a burn, etc. But now the only way I can see this as being a dark type move is that it goes against conventional Pokemon battling. Pokemon are allowed to enter battle with a held item for them to use. And this Darkmon just threw it to surprise and hurt its opponent. It's not literal cheating because I mean it's allowed, but it, it's close. Plus I guess the item is charged with a dark aura. The smack effect that it shows is the right color after all. Knockoff is also an item based move. The user basically slaps or rips the item from their opponent's grasp so that it can't be used. It's just rude. You ever just walk up to some lady you don't know and slap that donut out of her hand? Yeah, that was very rude. A very dark thing to do. No one benefits from this. It's not like you stole it. It's just on the floor ruined. At least if you stole it, you could eat it. And that's the move Thief. It's dark type too. And I mean, if you don't think thieves are automatically dark type, well, then you're automatically dark type now, aren't you? Basically, everybody agrees that thievery is wrong. And with this move, your Pokemon Pokemon acts like a thief and steals its opponent's held item. So now it's its own held item, which is similar to Switcheroo, where you trade held items. But by force, obviously. So you give your held item to the opponent while taking theirs. And this move can lead into so many hilarious shenanigans. It's very tricky, very sneaky, thus dark. Pursuit is kinda cheaty too. It's just a generic dark type attack normally, but the power of this attack is doubled if it's used on the target that is switching out of battle. So like, when a Pokemon returns to its Pokeball, it has to stand there, standing still, typically. Now well, that sounds like an easy target. Which is rude! These are unspoken rules for battle! Like, they aren't actually rules, but like, come on! You're so mean! You're so rude! You just want to win! You're doing anything you can to win! Ugh! There's no honor, so it's dark type. Throat Chop, or in Japanese, Hell Thrust, is the signature move of Incineroar, until they gave it to Beresciuta? 
The user attacks the target's throat, and the resultant suffering prevents the target from using moves that emit sound for two turns. The throat is a very weak spot, and being punched in it is akin to being kicked in the groin. It's a big weak point. There's no honor in attacking there. It's rude. So dark type works. And being hit hard enough to damage the windpipe temporarily for sure makes sound-based moves no longer doable. Darkest Lariat is Incineroar's other signature move, until the next games anyway. The user swings both both arms and hits the target. It's rather silly. But the move ignores stat changes, so that's good. Good as in rude cheaty McGee. So dark. Plus look at the dark aura. Yeah. Memento has the user cause itself to faint, but it lowers a lot of the opponent's abilities while doing so. A memento is something that serves to warn or remind, sort of like a souvenir, but also for people, and sometimes dark. Like if someone stabs you specifically to leave a scar so that you'll always remember them, that's a memento. It also plays a bit into the I'll take you down with me thing, where villains, usually, but not always, have accepted that they have lost, but want to lose while destroying the hero at the same time, a final act of dark revenge. Stuff like that. Night Slash has the user wait for an opportune moment to strike, and when they do, they do so with a slash. Doesn't inherently seem dark type until you look at its Japanese name, Crossroad Killing. That name refers to the seriously, legitimately evil deeds done by some samurai in feudal Japan. When they bought a new sword or had their current sword repaired, they would stake out by a crossroad at night, and once any lower class commoner happens to come by, well, they would kill them. Just straight up. They don't know them. They brought they could have had a big family, big happy family. Now they're dead. And for what? For you to test your sword? Yeah. But remember, samurai are super honorable warriors and should be revered by the West. <laughs> weebs. Too many weebs see Japan as a non-political paradise, but like, no. Any country, or, or heck, if there's any group bigger than six people that has done no wrong, it's because they haven't existed long enough. Dark. Hyperspace Fury is the signature move of Hoopa Unbound, and with it, it does its portal-making thing all around of its opponent and sends a flurry of punches through him. No regular Pokemon is going to have had any sort of training that helps them deal with a demigod Pokemon power like this. With regular battling, you tend to have an idea of where the attacks are coming from. You know, the other Pokemon. But when you're surrounded by portals that you can't really see into, you have no idea. It's like a group of people all ganging up on one guy. Even though you're just fighting a single multi-armed space-time rupturing deity, genie, demon, thing. It's, it's, it's dark type, it's rude. Black Hole Eclipse is the generic dark type Z move. And it goes against the idea that dark doesn't mean literal dark because black holes are literal darkness. But I suppose clearly this is not actually a black hole because only the enemy gets sucked in, but whatever. It is for sure that dark aura stuff I was talking about earlier though, but supercharged with Z energy. It inflicts dark magic pain everywhere for they are enveloped in it. So clearly it hurts. G-Max Snooze is the signature move of Gigantamaxed Grimmsnarl. With it, it not only releases a load of dark aura magic power stuff, but it also yawns greatly, putting its opponents to sleep. This, like its regular signature move, plays a lot into its origins. It's basically Ayan Makmigna, a giant fey goblin who could make entire towns fall asleep so that it could do its dark deeds. And Max Darkness is just the same, but without the sleep effect. It's just the generic dark type Dynamax move. Just a bunch of exploding dark aura. What sort of nasty thoughts do Dynamax Max Pokemon have. And with that, those were all of the obviously dark type moves. Moves that fit the bill just about perfectly. So now, new category. The, uh, I guess <laughs> category. Moves that do have reasons for being dark type, I just don't think they are the best or the most obvious. Like Brutal Swing, the user just swings its body really hard, damaging everyone around it. So it's not a skill based swing, so not fighting type, but still, why not normal type? Well, the best I could come up with is the idea that it just does not care about its surroundings. It damages any of its friends with this move too. It's pretty dark, just not super dark. Foul play causes the opponent's power to be used against them. The animation in the game is a bit... 
not obvious, but that's definitely Dark Aura in the newer games. The anime showed this one well. When attacked, Inke grabs the Dedenna and uses its own momentum against it. That seems more like a skillful kung fu kind of thing. It would probably work better as a fighting type move in this case, but the generic description and it being charged with Dark Aura says otherwise. In certain situations, it for sure could count as a dirty tactic, like hiding a big rock behind you so when the opponent punches you dodge it and then they punch the rock. That's foul play. That's rude. It would never pass in real sports. So dark type. I guess. I'm not super confident in this one, which is why it's in this category. Obstruct is the signature move of Obstagoon. Its functions are similar to Protect. It prevents any damage to it, but if the attack done against it is physical, then the attacker's defense stat drops. Mm-hmm. So Obstagoon is a rock and roll null. Stereotypically speaking, especially from the perspective of proper boomers and such, for lack of a better word. Rock and rollers and punks are just that, punks. They obstruct the streets with their protests, they obstruct justice with their riots, and so on. It's just a very rude thing to do. Of course, why they do it should always be taken into context, but that barely matters to many higher-ups in society. And so they just blanket see all of them as bad people, and thus dark. But this is the reason I have it in the I guess category. Like, skillfully protecting yourself from an attack? That's dark? What? How does it lower the attacker's defense? Do you fight back? Is it because, in the case of actual obstruction and protesty stuff, like, there's a line of police and some of them are now distracted with the obstructionist protesters just sitting there, so technically now the whole line of police is weaker? How does that translate to a one-on-one -on -one Pokemon battle? Ultimately, I think it's just dark because it's the signature move of a dark-type Pokemon, which is reason enough. So, I guess. Topsy-turvy is the signature move of Inkay and Malamar until they gave it to Grappalock eventually. It reverses the status changes the target has had, so like if their attack was raised twice but their speed was lowered one, now their speed is up one and their attack is lowered twice. It's, it's just hilariously rude. It means all of the buffing they spend time doing is not only useless to them now, but it is actively hindering them. <laughs> It's rude, it's mean, so dark type. But how the heck do you do that with dark thoughts alone? Like, ooh, I'm thinking bad things, now your stats are reversed. What? The whole concept and even the animation seem to fit ghost, or better yet, psychic, much better. It's like hypnotizing or mind controlling someone into thinking that their stats are the opposite of what they really are. And psychic would have worked well too, because Malamar, it's dark psychic type Pokemon. But I guess since it was its signature move at first, it can be explained as a psychic attack, but one that is charged with dark aura because it is a super dark Pokemon. Thus, it's dark type. So, okay. Fine. I guess. Malicious Moonsault is the signature Z-move of Incineroar, and also it's the final smash that it uses in Smash Bros. It strengthens its body with Z-power and crashes into its opponent, full-on heel wrestler style. Thus dark type. Incineroar is full-on a heel wrestler, those sports entertainment wrestlers who play characters that are to be seen as the villains. Thus dark type. And even though this attack is fiery and has a bunch of fire and ends in a big fiery explosion, uh, it's dark type. Hmm. And like, Incineroar's regular body slam moves aren't dark type because it is a dark type being. So why would this body slam be? Just, I guess it's just because it's charged with dark type Z energy, but because it's a fiery mon, there's fire everywhere too, but the fire doesn't affect anything, it's, so it's dark. I don't know. It has its reasons to be dark type, but it also has reasons against it. So here it is in the middle ground category. And plus, I guess it's not as bad as these last few. The move Snatch has the user steal the effect of the move that the foe uses next. What that means is, uh, okay, it's a little confusing. Here's the scenario. Sneasel versus Muck. Sneasel uses Snatch, so it waits for the effect of the Muck's move, which is Acid Armor. So Muck does Acid Armor, and it melts away its stuff to raise its defense. Sneasel comes over, and it steals that Acid Armor, and so now the Sneasel gets the defense buff instead. But that makes no sense. The Sneasel would just melt. Oh, Sneasel versus Beedrill. Beedrill uses Double Team to make clones of itself to raise its evasiveness. Oh, the Sneasel, though, it used Snatch, so it just steals the Beedrill clone. Now there's a second, it's just, it's Beedrill versus a Sneasel and an 
an illusionary bee drill. Bee drill still does it's worse evasion. It doesn't know which one's which. The move is never shown in the anime because it makes no sense. But the one time the manga shows it, there's a Gyarados. It uses rest. Rest. It's asleep to heal. And Bandit just steals the healing from it. <laughs> what? Like how do you steal a bird landing? Like roost. You know the bird lands for a turn to heal. How do you steal that? Some moves that make sense. You know stuffed cheek. The move that Greedent uses to boost some stats. Sneasel could reach in and grab the nut, steal it, eat it. There you go. Tatami mat. It's called something else in English. I only, I only know the Japanese name because I'm a weeb. But Tatami mat, you, it, you, it raises and it's there. Sneasel steals that. It makes sense for some. It does not make sense for others. How do you steal agility? Arcadine's like, ooh, use agility. I'm faster now. And then Sneasel's like, actually, no, I'm faster now. What? <laughs> All right, we have to move on. It, it's, it's very, very much a dark type thing, but... uh. It is not, no, <laughs> it, it is not. There you go. I feel like it would be better ghost type actually, because at least then there's some level of like supernatural stuff going on there. Like the, the bayonet using it against the Gyarados. It's a ghost. It can reach in and pull the healing from Gyarados's very soul. Reach in and pull the numbers from the code that says there's a stat buff. I don't know. It should be ghost type. There, yeah, it's a very mean thing to do, but ghosts are mean also. So it's a, uh, it should be ghost type. And that's why it's in the not category. Hone Claws has the user sharpen their claws to increase its accuracy and attack. I, I guess that's dark. You see in cartoons and movies all the time when the camera is like panning over the pirate or bandit camp, there's always some guy sharpening a sword. But like everyone needs to sharpen their weapons to keep them operational, even the just heroes. Heck, not sharpening your chef's knife is an even darker type thing to do. So I don't get it. Animals of all kinds need to hone their claws to survive. There's nothing dark about that at all. So for sure, this move would be better off not dark type. Just make it normal or fighting instead. Quash or postpone in Japanese causes the opponent's attack to go last. Uh, it's only really useful in double or more battles. And it says that this is done by suppressing them. So it's like suppressive fire. When in a modern combat situation, suppressive fire is when you shoot at nearby walls or the space nearby where an enemy is hiding behind cover. Not to hurt them specifically, but to keep them from leaving the cover. As them leaving cover would mean getting shot. It's a very common thing in tactical RPGs like XCOM, but I wouldn't say that's dark. It's a very valid strategy. A, hey, keep this guy from helping his buddy kind of deal, which I guess is a bit rude, maybe? Eh, enough that it's passable for dark type, perhaps, but it's just a strategy, it's just a normal thing. You're sitting on the other Pokemon, you're distracting them or something, you're keeping them from using their move until everybody else has done their move first. It's just a sort of normal thing to do. It should be normal type. And lastly, <clears throat> Baddy bad! Your totes adorbs partner Eevee pretends to be bad and attacks the opponent with a magical pillar of dark aura. It also acts as the shield of light to protect Eevee because it's unfair. That's entirely the reason partner Eevee is there, because it's unfair. Partner Eevee is cheating, it's dark. There. Well, I guess since it's using literal dark aura again, it's, it's an alright type for the move. But if you ask me, this move should just not exist. But what do you think? Any details to add? What's your favorite dark type Pokemon? Let me know down below. And until next time, never stop using your noggin.